Today we're going to talk about whether or not it's unfair or fair, I guess, to compare annuities to investments. Well, Eric, I think that it's the hardest thing in the world for all of us to stay off of comparing annuities to investments. And I think it's unrealistic to think that we wouldn't do any comparison. However, I think that's where we get in trouble. Well, and it's, it's the expectations game. Right. So often when people come to us, they've been conditioned to talk about return, whether it be from a mutual Correct. fund, savings account, whatever. Everything's about return. What's the return? What's the return? What's the return? Well, and they've spent their whole life accumulating this money, and so their focus has always been on that. So they're, they're trying to figure out how I can get the biggest return rather than mitigating the risk necessarily with an annuity right. to get the biggest return in dollars yes. rather than return in rate. Well, and what we what we have uh, done, what kind of inspired us this week, you know, reading uh, this article by Andrea Coombs that really gets into some of these things that we talk about on a regular basis, and that is, why do we buy uh, annuities? Why do we choose yeah. annuities? And there's contractual guarantees. Um, there is uh, cash flow, and that's what she really gets into, yeah. that, that there's this transition that we go through, that cash flow becomes king. And longevity of uh, knowing that we've got money no matter how long we yeah. live. And, and there is a third aspect, which is maybe a little bit more parallel to an investment, and that is where you want a secure level of growth contractual guarantees. Yeah, I like the idea of just saying it, it transfers risk right from me as the investor or individual to the insurance company right they're going to take care of, of doling out my my right. basically my, my allowance each month hopefully yes. and that's the income stream that i know i have confidence in so they're insuring my future income stream is how i look at it right anyway. and and past wisdom from uh the kind of the investment world has been if we draw our yeah. portfolio down by a certain level right uh, you know, four percent, four and a half percent, three and a half percent. Everybody's got their own view of it. That somehow um, we can continue to do that and be invested. But the last decade has kind of shown us that 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 really can't be relied upon. You know, in an era of five percent CDs, or you know, it's it's easy to say, oh, I can pull off five percent, never touch my principal. Well, if that, you that, look, that, if you look today, if you can find a five percent right, CD, right, I. Right. I you know, I could sell a few of those if I could find a 5% right. CD. Right. So that world no longer exists, that safety security aspect of getting those returns necessarily. So this is where if you need those returns that are a larger withdrawal than just pulling out your mm -hmm. principal, and a lot of people do today, Right. this is where annuity comes into play. Right. And, go ahead. Right. Well, I was just going to say that, that, again, you know, talking about not being focused on the returns, unfortunately, so many times, folks, Annuities are sold based on comparing them to investments and, and especially the indexed annuity or the hybrid annuity where it's stated you've got upside potential with no downside risk. Well, there is truth to that, but the upside potential is, is pretty minimal. And the, uh, the idea that it has outperformed uh, certain investments, uh, certain indexes, S&P 500 or whatever, over certain time periods in history, it was never intended to do right. that. Yeah, it's not what they're geared for, and that's it, we've talked about it in, in previous videos. You know, yes. In order for you to be happy, you look at the guarantees. If you can be right. happy with what the guarantees are offered through an annuity, then anything it, that you get above that, it's, it's a pleasant surprise. Exactly. It's so, you know, it's it's good news. Yeah. But you'll never be surprised in an annuity by it going the wrong way. Now I have to qu qualify that a little bit. Um, we're talking more about fixed annuities right. here and not as much about variable annuities because a variable annuity is an investment and yet it does have some guarantees that can. it can have, can have. Uh, and uh, so there, there is some aspect of that, that that you have to say you know well maybe for some people a variable annuity may fit um, uh, but again that's a whole different discussion. Sure. In her last point she talks about annuitization which yes. is a really interesting aspect because we've, we've talked a lot about hybrid annuities right? and the fact that you don't have to annuitize necessarily to get the same benefit that you would from annuitization. Exactly. So they talk, and her fo focus is on the guaranteed income stream right. that's provided from an annuity. Right. So for all practical purposes, we'll just assume that her annuitization 
would also mean turning on income for life. Right. Uh, you know, a different terminology. Uh, but we do find that with, with you know, clients that, uh, that, what would I call it, Eric? Maybe like that depression mentality where, yeah. where we can live it's, off of less and so we're going to and yet right. we've set this annuity up so that we can turn it on and turn on this income at a certain point in time and relax, enjoy what we have and know we'll never outlive our money. And yet we have clients that have a tendency to hold back from that. Right. And I think nobody wants to give up their principal. You've worked hard mm -hmm. to earn these dollars. Nobody likes the idea of just of spending. You, it. You, you throw it, you <laughs> give it all to the insurance company, you get that allowance. And that's what really annuitization is. It's that, that risk, you know, it protects you on, on the income side. Right. Well, the income rider on these hybrid annuities does something very similar in the sense, guaranteed income for life, but still allows you to get access and if there's anything left over, right. that amount can go on to your heirs. Yes. And that's, I think, the aspect of that type of annuity that's really popular. I think it helps people that would normally not annuitize to go ahead and take their income right. stream because they know that um, they still have some access to that account value. Yeah. So it's, uh, I, th I think it's really one of the things that we find really attractive right now because it does allow that flexibility. And for people that are used to this return mentality that we've talked about, right they still have that opportunity to hold on to those dollars a little bit. Right. Not necessarily get the best return, <laughs> but to get that income stream, have that safety security. So Eric, when we talk about comparing, <laughs> comparing annuities to investments, right. um, what's the balance? Well, you have to look at the, the diversification. For me, when you're looking at those two things, mm -hmm. you have to look at protecting the foundation. And that's, yes. you know, and that's where an annuity comes in. After that, hopefully investments can play a part in, you know, controlling for inflation and being out there. But so maybe a healthy way to compare annuities to investments would be within your own portfolio in terms of what proportion of your portfolio do you want in security and safety for that income yeah. foundation or or that death benefit type foundation as compared to what portion are you willing to put at risk? Well, and it's exactly, it's a protect the foundation. Mm -hmm. And how do you want to protect it? Are you comfortable protecting it in, 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 the, in the headwinds that we have going on? Or would you rather protect it with a rock solid foundation? So. I agree. Thank you, folks. Thanks for tuning in today.